Welcome. My name is Evelyn C. White. As a theater major in college who worked the technical side of productions, namely lighting design, I spent a lot of time at rehearsals. I greatly admired a drama professor who choreographed the curtain call for every play he directed. Early on in the rehearsal process, he'd remind the actors that the curtain call serves as the final image that the audience takes home with them. As such, it required as much thought and planning as everything that preceded it on the stage. In short, he emphasized that endings matter. The director's message was reaffirmed for me when I later read The House of the Spirits by Isabel Allende. Enthralled by the narrative about a multi-generational family, I was astounded by the last line of the novel, which showcased Allende's masterful control of the nearly 500-page text. For the closing line of the book was exactly the same as the first sentence of the novel. Barabbas came to us by sea. This is to say that Allende had used that six word phrase about Barabbas, a character that happened to be a dog, to frame her entire saga. In doing so, she ushered me in and out of a story that was so seamlessly constructed that I surrendered myself to it completely. As a literary curtain call, I consider the end of the novel among the best I've ever read because a strong ending is as critical to the success of a piece of writing as is the beginning. In the House of the Spirits, Allende crafted an ending that circled back to the first line of the book, a technique that can be very effective if it is authentic and flows naturally out of the body of the narrative. Readers will be able to tell immediately if the ending is forced or contrived. Endings that blindside readers with a surprise or unexpected plot twist can also make for a strong finish. In A Song for You, author Robin Crawford delivers a powerful account of her star-crossed romance with Whitney Houston. While the singer's drug dependency was well known, readers are surprised to learn that Houston once phoned an addiction psychiatrist and asked him to personally, quote, come and get her. As Crawford tells it, the doctor, mindful of professional ethics, said he couldn't do so, but instead offered to send an ambulance for the singer. Houston declined the gesture, saying she'd get a ride to his respected rehab clinic, but never made it. At the end of the book, Crawford reveals that the psychiatrist, reflecting on Houston's tragic death, said, maybe I should have gone to get her. Alice Munro, the celebrated Canadian Nobel laureate in literature, employed a stunning plot twist in Vandals, a story in her collection, Open Secrets. I'm not going to recount the ending, which left me slack-jawed. But during a second reading, I discovered the hints that Munro had left throughout the narrative. While the ending might have seemed to come out of nowhere, in reality, it had been hiding in plain sight. I suspect that Monroe revised the story many times to craft a finish that both caught the reader off guard and that also made perfect sense. For it's an article of truth that the best writing is rewriting. Like Alice Monroe, Flannery O'Connor was also a master at building up to powerful endings in her stories about race relations in the American South. A winning example is found in Everything That Rises Must Converge, a tale in which readers encounter a white woman and a black woman 
on a bus who, by chance, are both wearing the same hat. As it happens, Flannery O'Connor and Alice Walker, famed for her novel, The Color Purple, grew up within a few segregated miles of each other in rural Georgia. And that stretch of country road between their two homes proved pivotal in both the opening pages and the end of my book, Alice Walker, A Life. The beginning of my book came early on in my research, not so for the ending, which did not arrive until the final throes of a project that was contracted for four years, but took nearly 10 to complete. There were many days when I was tempted to just cobble together some kind of an ending, but I knew that I'd never be able to live with myself if I did so out of sheer exhaustion. So I had to hold fast to faith, patience, and all that I'd learned from witnessing meticulously executed curtain calls. And thus, the close of my book was ultimately delivered to me 450 pages in, but by what I believe were spiritual forces, an ending that circled back to an incident that I described on page seven. I took a page from Leonard Cohen and sang, Hallelujah. On that note, composers have always recognized the importance of beginnings and endings. Most of us immediately recognize the signature, dum 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 dum, dum 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 dum, first movement or opening of Beethoven's Fifth Symphony. And I bet that many of us are familiar with the coda or ending of Bohemian Rhapsody, the rock song composed by Freddie Mercury and recorded by his band Queen in 1975. Interestingly, no one thought that the six minute melange of rock and opera would become a smash hit, let alone contain one of the most iconic endings in the history of pop music. Nothing really matters, anyone can see. Nothing really matters to me. No one except Freddie Mercury, who was born in Zanzibar, an East African island. Yes, quiet as it has been kept, the legendary frontman for Queen was a native of Africa. Indeed, he replicates traditional African vocalizations in his song, Under Pressure. This brings me to the podium where I'm standing today. The origin story of this gorgeous piece began in 2017 at Nova Scotia Community College. Over a period of several years, a racially diverse group of people came together to envision and deliver this podium to the Delmore Buddy Day Learning Institute in Halifax an organization that espouses as a core value, excellence in Afrocentric education and research. Thus, this podium represents the central role that storytelling plays in black culture throughout the African diaspora. Made from Baltic birch plywood and solid oak, every aspect of this podium is infused with the spirit of unity. And yes, there was a process of back and forth, in literary terms, revision, as the piece went from an idea to its magnificent ending or curtain call. So, in addition to examples from literature and music, I wanted to leave you with a concrete image of a strong finish and with the understanding that through dedication, purpose, and revision, you too can craft an ending that will leave an indelible impression on the reader, just like this podium, which you are not about to forget. Am I right or am I wrong? Thank you. <laughs>